Hello, it's Lawrence Romanowski from Calgary, Canada, and uh, we are looking at a couple of uh, very nice uh, late model uh, Porsches, very fast. And the thing that they have in common, even though one's a 996, the darker car is a 996, and the uh, lighter car is a 997. This is a 2005 GT3, and this is a 2007 uh, 997.1 Turbo Coupe. The thing that they have in common, uh, besides being Porsches, is that they both have a version of the Mesger engine. So because I've got these two cars together and for sale at the same time, um, I thought it would be a good excuse to talk about the Mesger engine. What is a Mesger engine? Why is it important? Uh, why is it relevant to, to Porsche? And uh, what does it, um, what is its impact on the vehicle's collectability and, uh, and, and value? And why is, you know, the Mesger engine something that people talk about and uh, something that is uh, sought after? Um, okay, so I'll go through that history, and it's it's a lot of history. It's you know, um, forty years of Porsche uh, racing motors uh, to go through in a short video. Okay, so Hans Mesger was an engineer, and uh, his first job at Porsche was designing the new six-cylinder engine for the 911. Now they benchmarked uh, uh, an engine that needed to have 130 horsepower, so that was the same output as the Furman uh, four-cylinder engines with their incredibly complicated uh, sorry, bevel gears and shafts that drove the camshafts, little jewel-like four-cylinder engines that were the Carrera engines, some of them with Hearth uh, roller-bearing crankshafts, some without, but they wanted that racing engine, uh, the power of that racing engine, but something that didn't need to get rebuilt every 10,000 kilometers. Um, and something that was easy to rebuild, and the uh, Carrera engines most definitely are not easy to rebuild. Um, it'll cost you about $100,000 to have somebody do that today if you can find them. I don't even know anybody in the area that can touch a 4-cam uh, Furman engine. Anyway, they wanted the power and performance from the racing engine, but something that was a lot more civilized, a lot more quieter, a lot quieter, a lot more economical, and a lot easier to service and cheaper to manufacture. Okay, so they had a six-cylinder pushrod engine uh, in the design stage uh, that was uh, more or less a six-cylinder version of the Volkswagen 4, um, but uh, Furman wasn't happy with that. And also he had a new boss, I suppose, and that was Ferdinand Peck, who later became the, the chairman of the VW Audi Group, and who was Ferdinand Porsche's um, uh, grandson and Ferry Porsche's nephew. Um, uh, Ferdinand Peck's mother was Ferdinand Porsche Sr.'s daughter. Okay, I hope you got that. Anyway, so Porsche family. And uh, Ferdinand Peck's first job then was working with Mesger to design the six-cylinder engine. And they came out with something that was extraordinarily robust. It was uh, the crankcase had seven main bearings uh, and a vertically split crankcase with individual cylinders that were threaded in to the crank, uh, horizontally opposed, and, uh, and then with a um, uh, single overhead cam. So that was the, that was the, the 911 engine and uh, that engine went on, you know, to produce like more than 800 horsepower. Ferry Porsche, you know, has said, reportedly has said, that if he'd known how much power that engine could ultimately produce, he would have told him to make it cheaper and simpler in the first place. Okay, so that's a Mesger engine. The first racing engine was the four-cylinder four-cam. That's a Furman engine, okay? But the, the six-cylinder engines for the 911 were Mesger engines. And then Ferdinand Peck's first project was the Carrera 6. Um, and that, was, that used a version of the 911 engine in what was the 904. Uh, they changed, it to 90, would change the name to 906 or Carrera 6. And, and Ferdinand Peck's first overall car project was that racing car. Okay, so then they, they're making the 911 
uh, road car with the engines and they, and they, and they tune and tweak the engine. We have a 911 R with over 200 horsepower that they make. And, uh, this engine has a stellar, um, racing career. Uh, they go on to turbocharge it. And, uh, uh, again, that is Mesger, um, who, uh, orchestrates the, the uh, turbocharging that engine. And it goes in one of the race cars, um, a, uh, RSR, uh, and then, and that becomes the basis of the 930. And then that turbocharged Mesger engine goes on to power, you know, all of the in various forms, all of the endurance racing cars where Porsche completely dominated in the 70s and 80s. Okay, now that's not the only engine Mesger designed um, because, uh, you know, he also designed, you know, when it came time to do the 917 and that uh, as well was for, he was working with Ferdinand Peck on that uh, and that was also their project, which, you know, in normally aspirated form, you know, produced you know, 600 horsepower, or whatever it did at one Le Mans in 1970 and, um, and, uh, 71. And then it went to the Can-Am series and completely dominated, uh, in turbocharged form with Mark Donahue and Roger Penske. Well, that's a Mesger engine too. After that success, uh, McLaren was looking for an F1 engine. And uh, they were shopping around. Porsche had a stellar record for endurance racing. So Porsche approached, or sorry, McLaren approached Porsche about building an F1 engine. And Porsche wasn't willing to contribute any money. Um, uh, so McLaren needed an engine, and so they got TAG, Monsieur, Monsieur OJ, I think from TAG, a rich Saudi uh, family. He was sponsoring Williams at the time. And so he convinced him to put his name on a new F1 engine. That became the, uh, the Formula One engine, the TAG Turbo F1 engine. That was a Mesger engine too, okay? So that, that, that he also designed. And uh, they were paid for it um, uh, from the uh, McLaren and TAG. That's also a Mesger engine. Um, in the early 80s, they came to the limit of the air-cooled engine's uh, power output because they started to develop cooling problems. But then Porsche realized that the, they come to the limitations of, of their racing engines that were only air-cooled. So after that, they started thinking about water-cooling them. And what they really needed to do was water cool the heads. And so they came up with uh, water cooled heads for the, nine, the 956 and the 962. And with that engine that was the, you know, the base Mesger 911 engine, but now with individual water cooled heads, air cooled, air cooled cylinders, um, then they completely dominated Le Mans in the mid 80s. I mean, taking, you know, nine or 10 positions where, where half the field was Porsches. And they won just about, won and placed just about everything. They completely dominated um, uh, endurance racing. And the 959 uh, looked to the 962 racing cars with their water-cooled heads for inspiration. And that car as well had water-cooled cylinder heads although it was a one piece per bank design, not six individual heads like the 962. But it was still, you know, based on the same fundamentals. Um, the rules changed again, and uh, they kind of flirted in and out of, 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 uh, of Le Mans racing. There was, there was a, a, a car called a Dower 962 that ran in, in 1994, and they completely water-cooled version of the Mesger engine. Not just, uh, not just water-cooled heads, but water-cooled cylinders as well. And uh, uh, that car won Le Mans in 1994. Um, and so they came up with something called a GT1. Uh, and that was very curious homologation rules on that car. Um, they only had to make like one of them. So they ran this 911 GT1 in like 90... 
6, 97, 98, if I'm not mistaken. It didn't look anything like a 911, by the way. Um, and, and each of those years, the cars looked a little bit differently. But that car then had the completely water-cooled version of the Mesger race engine. Porsche has the new 996. Uh, and uh, they're getting lots of criticism, or there are lots, there's lots of concerns that they're playing around a little bit too much with the 911 heritage in the interest of uh, platform sharing with the Boxster uh, and in the interest of, well, basically saving the company by knocking, you know, 30% off the cost of building a 911. And they wanted to make sure that everybody knew that they were still a racing car company and that racing was still part of the DNA. And they wanted to do a cup series for the 996 uh, to demonstrate that it was still as sharp as ever and they didn't have an engine. So the, uh, uh, what they determined was that what they needed was a normally aspirated and a turbo engine that could go in their GT1, GT2, and GT3 cars. Now the new engines for the 911 were water-cooled, um, but they were not race engines. They did not have, critically, dry sump lubrication. They had something called an integrated dry, dry sump, which is basically just another scavenge, scavenge pump, but it wasn't a true dry sump engine. That engine in the regular Carreras for the 996 and 997 is not a racing engine like the Mesger engine six was. It would not be suitable for a racing car and they needed a new engine. They needed normally aspirated and a turbocharged version of it. When they were planning the 996 Cup Series, there were different proposals. It was going to be too much money to redesign the engine for the GT3. And then somebody came up with the idea that they could use that GT3 engine as the basis for the turbo as well. And then they could amortize the cost, the development costs of this water-cooled Mesger engine over the normally aspirated engine and the turbocharged engine. And then they were, they were given the go-ahead. And that's how the Mesger engine, which started developing by being developed by Hans Mesger, overseen by, by per, Ferdinand Peck, who gave the, you know, the architecture to the 917, who, where they, you know, won like 30,000 races with this engine. Everything from the Perry to Car Rally to circuit racing, uh, you know, all over the world. That engine, it went through being a, a single overhead cam to twin cam with water-cooled heads and then water jackets replacing the fins so that it was an entirely water-cooled engine. It went, uh, you know, the, the, the water-cooled head is in the 956, 962, and, and the 959 supercar, and then the completely water-cooled engine went in the Dower 962 and the GT1, which won Le Mans in, in 2000. And that was the engine that's in these two cars and that's why when people say, I want, I want the car with the Mesger engine, the Mesger engine's important, the Mesger engine has heritage and provenance and so forth. That's why it's so important because there's a direct link between the engines in both of these cars and all of the Le Mans and endurance and sports car races that were won for 40 years with Porsche. That's why this engine's so so. Um, sought after. And that's why, in my opinion, a 991, sorry, 997.1 with the Mesger engine will ultimately be worth more than the 997.2, which had a different DFE engine and finally went away from this, the architecture of this engine that was created in, you know, like 1963. With that, when the German manufacturer slash tuner Roof, who makes some of the fastest and most exquisite and most valuable 911 variants um, 
when even recently when uh you know he'd have a car that was entirely carbon fiber but he would go back to the 3.6 mesger engine because it was so bulletproof and had so much um uh, i mean they knew everything about it and it was so reliable and so durable uh, that uh, that they used that engine, not the new one, with their super expensive half million dollar Porsches. And when Porsche decided to make their GT2 RS in 2011, well, in 2010 the turbo got the new engine. the The, the last year for the Mesger engine was 2010 in a turbo. Um, uh, they could have used the new engine as the basis for the. GT2 RS 997, but they didn't. They went back to the Mesger engine to do it. And the and the last Mesger engine car was the 2011 GT3 RS 4.0. So that was the last car to have this engine tuned to 500 horsepower. And those cars now are you know four or five hundred thousand dollars. So that's the premium that 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 uh, the Porsche collectors put on that engine and that's why I think both of these cars have you know their their collector future assured because they have a direct link to the racing cars and you just you just can't do that anymore I mean I mean Porsche won Le Mans uh, three years in a row uh, with their 919 hybrid they've got a, a styling exercise uh, that shows what a road-going um, 919 hybrid could look like. But the only problem is it it takes a half an hour to start it because you have to pre-warm all the fluids before you before you can attempt to start it because clear, the, the clearances are so tight. And it's a 2-liter V4, which has terrible crankshaft vibrations that you don't notice at, you know, 8,000 RPM, but you'd notice, at, you know, at every other RPM. And it'd be a miserable road engine. So we're not going to see the Porsche engine that won Le Mans in a road car anymore because it's a two liter V4, okay? So that era is gone and these cars represent sort of the last of the, um, the last of an era where you can buy a Porsche road car that has a racing engine in it that you can compare to the cars that had just won some of the most uh, impressive road races in the world like Le Mans. Okay, so I hope that goes some way to explaining what a Mesger engine is. There's lots of Mesger engines, but this is the this is what people mean when they, they think of the Mesger engine in a 911.